Hello, everyone. Welcome to Diver Link. Telemetry made easy. Thanks for uh, for joining us. Uh, we've got a great uh, participation rate on this one, and um, we really appreciate the support and interest in uh, in this subject. Um, we got everybody on mute. Um, we found that uh, with with the Zoom, we've had to uh, minimize the amount of time we speak and just kind of jam pack things into a, a tight 30 minute uh, talk. So we'll we'll try and stick as close to that as we can for you and obviously for uh, for Zoom not timing out on us. Uh, any questions you have or think of uh, during this, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us afterwards by email. We'll happy, uh, be happy to answer any questions. And uh, just so you know, we'll be circulating the uh, technical brochures and uh, when it's available, the recording for this, uh, for this presentation. Uh, on uh, my side with, uh, with uh, Van Essen, we've got Jonathan Evans. Uh, Jonathan uh, has been with us for a few years now. Um, doing a great job in the east. Everything east of the Mississippi is Jonathan's territory. Jonathan brings on board a, a wealth of knowledge in terms of, of field work. He worked for a government agency and retired uh, just a few years ago to join us, uh, but 30 years experience and uh, he's forgotten more than I'll ever know for field work. So he's a pretty good resource for, uh, for anything you have as far as questions go and water monitor goes. Uh, I've been with Van Essen for almost 15 years. Uh, I've dealt with all, <laughs> all kinds of projects, uh, project work, um, you know, questions. If I don't have it, I, I usually turn to people like Ranger Schmidt. Ranger is uh, our monitoring services manager. He's uh, actually responsible for um, delivering data to, uh, to clients with our telemetry system. He's, he's got uh, both our older version and DiverLink deployed and they offer a, a, a bunch of services uh, to their clients in, uh, in Europe. So thanks for joining us, Ranger. I know it's late. So just, uh, just what we're gonna be uh, touching on, uh, not too much on, on divers or, or Van Essen, we're focusing mainly on diver link, but we will touch on those other things. Um, the diver link components, of course, we're gonna talk about some projects uh, that we have on the go from around the world. And uh, we're gonna do a, a live demo on uh, Diver Hub and uh, Diver Hub Public. So stay tuned for that. So uh, Van Essen Instruments, a company that's uh, been in business, we're a Dutch company, and uh, most of you know that. Um, been in business for 75 years, uh, manufacturing for um, companies in and around the Netherlands especially. Um, starting in 1989, the company was tasked to build a data logger, pressure transducer data logger, and the thing was enormous, uh, <laughs> barely fit in wells. But over time, we've developed something that uh, we're pretty proud of, the diver data logger. Uh, it was commercialized in 1995, and since then, we've been uh, selling it worldwide. As you can see, there's over 200,000 sold uh, all over the world in, in many projects. And we pride ourselves in uh, you know, delivering the highest quality standard for reliability and accuracy. Everything. Uh, is tested in-house before it uh, gets to you and we do our best to make sure that you have a worry-free product. Uh, we also have extensive in-house um, expertise, uh, not just with Ranger, but there's other scientists and engineers that uh, if, you know, your sales guy can't get the uh, answer, Ranger can't get it, then there's, there's other people that definitely will. So just, uh, this is all we're gonna be doing for the divers. <laughs> is just showing you an image, uh, but I'll, I'll touch on each one of these. Uh, the newest addition to the diver family is the TD line. These are the first two, the uh, TD diver and TD barrel. Uh, these units are, are meant essentially for, you know, a, a lower cost solution, uh, cost effective solution, but also giving you um, the most bang for your buck. The TD diver is capable of 144,000 data points. It's ideal for, uh, for those long-term monitoring projects. The Barrow, I always say there's no projects complete unless a Barrow is deployed because we're absolute. These things are hermetically sealed. They're tested in-house before they get to you. And um, you know, you've got to have a Barrow to help you with the post-processing in, in terms of uh, raw data. Uh, to this day, since it's uh, release, the, the middle diver, the micro diver is uh, the smallest on the market for both length and diameter. 
Um, this unit is also ideal. We ramp up the functionality in terms of what it's capable of uh, sampling wise uh, to allow you to do, you know, more accurate pumping tests or slug tests or things like that. Uh, same functionality inside the next unit, but getting into a more accurate, um, a little bit more robust uh, unit is the Sarah Diver. The Sarah is 100% uh, ceramic. That includes the, um, all the other divers. We, we have a, um, a ceramic pressure transducer, uh, but this unit is around because you want to get those you know, those wells that are otherwise costed, corrosive, and destroy everything else you've tried to put in them. The Sarah will usually stand up to that. And the last one is our CTD diver. All the divers deliver the temperature uh, and depth or pressure, uh, but this one also uh, provides you with the connectivity salinity values that uh, you may want in some of your wells. That's the diver family. Now on to diver link. Diver link, uh, what is it? Why is it? Uh, DiverLink is a durable and easy to install modem uh, in a nutshell. Why would you want it? Well, uh, you know, you want to limit the number of times you're going into the field. You want to reduce those field visits. Maybe the, 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 the actual uh, monitoring site is, is far away and you have to incorporate it into your costs. Well, you can reduce those costs by deploying one of these and uh, reduce the number of visits you put in place. That is it in a nutshell. Uh, but we're going to elaborate more on that. Uh, can be used in a variety of applications, not just in your typical, you know, let's say groundwater well application with a flush mount or a stick up, but also for surface water applications, even in uh, tanks or vessels that are holding water that need to be monitored. Diver link transmits data uh, from the diver data logger. We don't work with anybody else. It's purely for the divers and it's over a cellular network. Uh, it's also easy to integrate the diver link to our diver uh, web portal and we deliver a once a day delivery, but we have customization capable uh, of delivering more if you, if you need, if you need that. The cross section of what, um, what it would look like in a stick up application looking after or monitoring rather groundwater. Of course, the diver deployed and the beauty of, of, our divers and our, our cables is that they've already been in existence. It's really just, if you want to upgrade your system and you've got a DXT cable, all you really need is the diver link box. Uh, essentially is what we want to uh, point out in this, in this slide using this one. So uh, here are the parts and pieces that make up and some of the customized features that we do offer. Um, believe it or not, we've got a client that requested a right angle DXT cable. Uh, and we were able to deliver it. It's, you know, for one of those applications where the cable just doesn't go straight, it goes off and out the uh, side of a box, perhaps. Um, we offer an external antenna. Um, there's two versions of the diver link. One's got an internal antenna where you don't have to worry about your, you know, uh, your cell strength. And if you wanted to boost the strength by adding a longer cable, uh, we offer two versions, I believe uh, a five foot and a 15 foot cable. Um, perhaps longer, I'm not sure, but this is just a look at the external antenna and its low pro profileness, so you can actually make it less attractive for people that are walking by it. Um, two things that you really can't uh, change, and these are the internals. Um, let me correct that. You can change the SIM card. You can, um, you know, use your own. I don't know why you would, um, because the SIM card that we supply is a world card, and it's not latched onto any one provider. I don't know if many of you, I know one pr person that's listening in particular has had to deal with uh, uh, the, the um, cell providers in the past, but uh, if you've ever had to do it, it's a bit of a nightmare finding the right uh, department. So um, that we offer this at a very low cost solution or rather a, a data transfer package is, uh, is pretty good. Lithium battery is the other part that we supply uh, and we would rather source those for you and because it's a very particular uh, part number that you have to, uh, and voltage that you have to uh, apply to these diver links. Uh, probably the, the most exciting takeaway from this is that this doesn't have a switch, it doesn't have a button, it's activated by what this person's holding in their hand and that is a magnet. You just wave it over the activate section for a few seconds and then it starts its sequence of lights, which you'll see in the coming slides. Or at least I'll point it out. Um, some of the, uh, the features and benefits of our system, uh, we'll just look at these pictures at the top. We have uh, a barrel built into the box uh, up in the top left. You'll see there's that uh, 
the cursor's waving over right now. That's where the barometric information is going to be collected. That information is going to be relayed to our diver hub with the diver data and it'll already be compensated. So it's a bit of an auto compensate. The uh, center picture is the external antenna, antenna rather. This is where you'll screw down the uh, antenna we saw in the previous slide. And of course it's right next to the barrel. And this is where the DXT cable is going to connect to, uh, to our diver link. It's just a screw on uh, cable and away you go. Um, other things uh, to take away from it, we already mentioned the lithium battery and its compactness, but it has an IP67 rating, which uh, means it's really uh, good for avoiding water and dust egress, ingress rather. Um, with our once a day transmit, you can expect at least five years out of these batteries, depending on your conditions, obviously. Super hot, super cold, we're looking at, uh, we're looking at possibly different batteries, but certainly um, you know, degrading the battery life potentially a little faster. Uh, and one of the nice features is anything that we offer uh, in the future will automatically be applied to these diver links through over the air firmware updates that you're not even gonna notice and it will, will not interrupt your data cycles. So more pictures, uh, more views, but the, uh, the one I want you to pay attention to is the front view of the uh, diver link. Here is where the uh, lights, and we don't have a, a blinky light section here, but uh, I will point it out. Once that device is activated, uh, you'll see a sequence of lights, uh, at least it'll go through a sequence of lights, showing you that it's connected to a diver and cable, which is the first light. When it's green, it'll go on to the next one. The next uh, light blinking will be the SIM card. It just wants to make sure that it's seated properly and that it's in place. The next light down uh, is the GSM signal whether it's got a good signal or not. And by the way, any one of these uh, comes up with a red, it'll start the process over again, but it might take a few minutes to get that process going. The last light in the sequence is whether or not it hit the server. Now, if all of these lights go green, it's safe to say that this is activated and you can move on to your next installation. The other uh, exciting thing for us is that later this year, and already we're <laughs> offering uh, more to these product lines, but uh, we're offering a Diver 3 link. You can have the option for just uh, one cable connection, uh, two cable connections, and of course the third. So for those folks that have a well that they want to monitor the different levels and have three different divers connected to one unit, you don't have to have that one one-to-one uh, -one relationship. Or if you've got wells that are close to each other, and you could run some conduit to a centralized point that's going to act as a, a modem for all three of those divers and their, and their data, of course. So that's uh, later this year, year Q4, uh, probably closer to the end of the year. So we've been talking about um, the diver, uh, diver link, of course, the diver and cable. That's the center slide. But really, there's uh, more to uh, this whole system uh, to make things work properly getting the field information and applying that information uh, to a, a platform. We've got diver field. You'll see the field work is collected there. Things like manual measurements, uh, your cable lengths, uh, threshold limits. Uh, that can communicate uh, directly to our diver office. That information is fed to diver office, which is the slide off to the, to the right. And there's where you're really going to be managing the diver still. You want to be able to have a, you want to have a, uh, you know, a, a a direct link to the divers to be able to talk to them and um, program them and, and get them out in the field the way you want them. You can future start them as well. So all these pieces really contribute to Diver Hub, our web portal, where you'll have a username and password. And the information that you've applied to the divers and the field information goes into templates that'll then be uploaded to the Diver Hub. And by the way, you're not restricted to our Diver Hub. If it's something that um, you wish to take another direction, you can push that data uh, to uh, another FTP uh, through an API and uh, to a server of your choice, uh, choosing. I know some folks just have to have it that way and some folks uh, need to have it that way. So if it's a uh, diver hub that's uh, not going to work for you, uh, you've got, you got your choices. Here's some uh, pictures of installations. If you're just wondering, you know, how these things would look in the in the field and in well situations and stick ups and things like that. We've got a nice uh, dirty wet application here with an in street uh, flush mount uh, diver uh, diver link there, kind of peeking its head out and saying hello in that first picture. 
uh, works fine. And by the way, there is, uh, there is a limit to how much water these things can see. And it's uh, just over five and a half feet for a two hour uh, period. So if you've got uh, a flush mount that's you know, that deep <laughs> and that it's get, you know, susceptible to flooding for long periods of time, the diver link I, I know will not work for your, for your application. Um, but in other situations, uh, stick up situations, we've got, uh, this is a um, installation in Ohio, you'll see the demo site for that. So I won't elaborate any more on that. There's more flush mounts. Uh, there's two systems working with external antennas in this picture that's being uh, pointed out now. And uh, the next slide really is just to point out, yes, you can have an internal antenna inside a well if that well is something other than a, you know, a thick uh, metal. This is a plastic application. I think it's an HDPE. And there's another flush mount application that, that we're showing and, and how much space there is inside those flush mounts, even with the diver link installed, they're quite small. So that's enough of my, uh, my talk for the moment. I'm gonna pass it on to Jonathan, who's gonna take you through Diver Hub and Diver Hub Public. Hello, thanks, Eric. Uh, I'm Jonathan Evans, and uh, I wanna show you a little bit about Diver Hub Online Portal. Uh, it's a secure cloud-based online portal that the central hub for your data and equipment management. So all the data comes in from the field will be into Diver Hub. You can manage all your data inside here. The nice feature about this that it also collects the barometric pressure as Eric pointed out in a previous slide where you can compensate the data automatically inside Diver Hub, your water levels. So all that's done for you. So when you export out the data, it is compensated. We also have interactive map that you can pan and zoom and uh, target to uh, certain areas that you wanna look at in your data. We can view station metadata, water level time series charts, and I'll show you that in a live demo. You can also download your data into a CSV file format, uh, exporting out data. Uh, some examples, some projects we already have going. Um, we have several in the United States, South America, and also in the Netherlands. Uh, one, one I would point out is the one in the, the Hague where we have 416 measurement points. And I want to show you that example project here where of the 626, 400 of those plus are diver links and they are transmitting data into Diver Hub. And with that, it's also bringing in, you also can do the historical data. So it, it, they imported in 75 million data points. And we uh, as a Van Essen are uh, basically our, our turnkey project. Uh, if you want, we can do everything for you. Like install, verify data, send the data files to you in a report format. Everything that you need, we can do it for you in a turnkey project, if you need to be. But we are there to support you in Diver Hub to build your templates and to help you uh, um, train and help you along with your data. Now I'm gonna switch gears, go to the web portal here. I'm logging on to the uh, Diver Hub system. Go to my demo site here. So this is the home page that you'll see uh, when you log in with your unique ID and password. And these are widgets here that you have on the home screen here that you can customize what you want on your home screen or not have nothing at all. But uh, really nice feature to have where you can just click on these widgets and they correspond with the column to the left. So I'm going to click on the map here to show you the map of the sites. And it'll load up a map for you. And we're zooming into the United States here. We have, both of us have two demo sites. Eric has one down in the Arizona area, in Tucson area. And I have one in Ohio. And I'm going to concentrate on this one in Ohio. So you just click on this uh, location here, this little hand here that moves over the site there. This gives you basic information about the monitoring point name 
address coordinates, water levels first measurement. That was the time it would install. And the last measurement, which was today at nine o'clock in the morning. Also shows the active hardware status right here with the diver link and diver that's active. Little picture here and hit this view details button. This goes to the monitoring point information page. And on the left there shows this basic information of the uh, uh, XY coordinates, the address, the well information itself. The middle part is the hardware information where you got diver link to barrel link data logger. Remember that's the barrel link on the diver link. Diver data logger, the DXT cable. All these show active and the serial numbers and when the data transmission interval is. In this case, it's one day. And with these buttons here on the left and right, if you have a lot of uh, sites here, you can move to one site or the other uh, just to this monitoring point screen. You can zoom into the map, zoom in and out here to your site. And you got a couple pictures too you can load up for the site itself. Go to the water level time series. Just click on this box here. <clears throat> it'll load up the chart of your time series data. And it'll come up with the default of one month to start. And you can change that to three months, six months, year to date, or all data. In the legend, you can click on and off things you do not want to see. So in this case, I just want to look at the diver water level and I'll just click that off all these other ones and it'll show the water levels here in the chart you can go to three months and it's pretty fast switching to one month three months year data or all data I kept the manual measurement in there when I first was there installing the diver link I had to make a manual measurement and you can load these up throughout time here uh, with the same template just adding the manual measurements to that template and load it up and they will appear on the screen. This pop button on the right here shows the chart content of, you can print chart, you can download the images or download to a CSV or XLS. So really nice feature here that you can just really quickly print the chart that you want. Down below shows the diver and air pressure, also shows the diver and air temperature. And again, you can click on and off whatever you don't want to see or have it all there. Again, you have this hot button here to print that chart out. So you want to download data. So you go to the data management and export your data. Here you can customize what your water level time series you want to look at. Top of casing, reference to vertical reference datum, whatever you need. You check the box you want or you can hit select all. And you can also do the raw data time series from the diver. The air temperature, diver pressure, diver temperature. You can do whatever you want here, customize it. And you can export all monitoring points or just one unique point that you want to look at and then hit the export to CSV file here. And if you did select all, it would export all the files like a big batch format. Housekeeping, show you a little bit of feature there. Here we'll show you the voltage of the site. and also the uh, SIMS card information about the signal, signal strength. And again, you can print the screen out and kind of see how your battery voltage is uh, moving along. Uh, it was staying within uh, the voltage you need. I'll switch gears here and go to the uh, public data portal of NS and Instruments. So this website is the water level data it's made public to administrators of groundwater and monitoring networks. So every marker there 
corresponds to mar margin point, all data is also available through the API. So this shows the, in this case, we're zooming into this monitoring point here. Click on it here and hit the VEI1 point. It'll come up with a chart on the bottom and load up the war levels. And on the screen below here shows the war levels. And you also have the hot button here to download the data right off the bat. So it's a quick and easy way to get your data, um, to view it and to print it out or send it to a CSV format. And on the right here shows just the basic information of the site itself. And you can go through, if you had a whole bunch of points here, uh, we only have our two demo sites here, but if you had all the points here, look, you can also make them public and it makes it really nice to view your data quickly. Back to the uh, presentation. So reviewing the Diver Hub Public and Diver Hub API, it's a quick and easy way to view data. Get your data and you can download into a CSV file format. Remember though, everybody can see this. So uh, if you have sensitive data, do not uh, put it on the public page, but if you can, it's a nice quick, easy way of getting data. It works with Diver Hub, so if it's, the data is in Diver Hub, it will be available in Diver Hub Public, and it's updated constantly. So from the last transmission, it also updates the Diver Hub Public. Uh, another option to collect data is to use the Diver Hub API function, the third-party system to pull data out of Diver Hub. So you can use any um, of your own database to pull data from Diver Hub into your servers and you, whatever you use. Back to Eric. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, and by the way, the demo site is available to anyone. Um, we just need to uh, get you registered and uh, we can send you the log information. And you can navigate that system yourself, look at the data, uh, look at all the parts and pieces to give you a better idea. Um, I know there's some questions that came up. Uh, we'll be happy to answer those uh, in emails afterwards if you want to send the email to your representative. And uh, yeah, thanks for attending, guys. Thank you. We appreciate you coming and uh, taking time of your day. We're going to end it there. Take care.